Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Apologies, it's another garage video, but I am recording these in winter. Um, it's raining, it's miserable, it's cold. I mean, I can deal with the cold, I just don't want to go and get wet. So unfortunately, it's another garage video, but it is a video I had planned to make anyway, but I just wish there was sort of more riding videos in between all the garage videos I've been doing recently, but it is what it is. It is winter and there's not a lot I can do about it, unfortunately. Anyway, this video is about this. The quad lock motorcycle mount. And basically, is it really worth the silly price tag that you pay for them? So before I start talking about this, I am not sponsored by anybody, I'm not sponsored by Quadlock or anything like that, so I have no pressure to tell you whether I think you should go and buy it, it's brilliant, it's amazing. I will tell you genuinely what I think about things, and I'll do exactly the same with this Quadlock system. So, I've had Quadlock on my bike now for around about 3-4 years, and don't get me wrong, it is a very very good system. I mean, your phone will not come off that Quadlock. Once it's in and secure, that ain't coming off. It is actually very, very good. My issue with Quadlock is the price and how much it all is to get set up. So I've been online, I've looked at how much it would cost me now to get it all again, uh, because I actually forgot how much it was back three, four years ago. I have the iPhone 11. So I got this case for the iPhone 11 back then. It would cost me now 22.99 just for this case. Which I know isn't astronomical, because some cases you buy now are more than that, but... And to be fair, the case itself is actually a very good case. It's very, very well protected. Um, it's got slight raised edges around the front to stop your screen getting scratched. The corners of the case are very, very good. Um, I've dropped this phone so many times, it's always landed on your corner. Obviously it always does land on the corner. And it's protected it, and my phone's been absolutely perfectly fine. And on your camera as well, obviously it's recessed so you can't lay it down onto a surface and scratch your lens same with your screen basically the problem I have with it is if you buy a new phone this case becomes redundant so you get have to, if you want to carry on using your quad lock you have to buy a new case from quad lock website or a shop that sells it um, and that would be another 20 odd quid if it was the iPhone 11 I don't know if the more expensive the newer phones are more expensive for the cases I don't really know I didn't look into that so that's yeah obviously that's one slight bugbear with it so my bike has the um, handlebar mount. That cost me $39.99. Um, I also have the vibration dampener on my system because with iPhones, you have um, like a floating lens in the camera. Too much vibration basically ruins that camera completely. Um, I have been told a new camera is around about 150, 200 pound, I think it was, um, if it can be repaired. Otherwise you're buying a whole new phone. So. The vibration dampener basically just allows your phone to sort of move and go with vibration to stop the uh, lens sliding up basically. So yes, you do need that and for the sake of $15.99, I would highly, highly recommend that. But if you put all that together, that's just, just so you can have your phone mounted to your handlebars, that's just cost me, or did cost me, just shy 80 quid. Now, with today's climate, would I pay it again? No, no, I wouldn't. Um, and if I'm completely honest with you, I don't actually use it very often. Um, my problem with it is, because of the vibration dampener sort of moves around, it isn't just a matter of plonk on, twist, and it's locked. It's a real pain in the backside to get it on because when you push your phone into the mount, it sort of moves a little bit. If you haven't got it on straight perfectly every time, you you end up faffing around so much, and it just really really annoys me. So I just find it easy to throw it even in my pocket or bang it into the, uh, my tank case that I've got. Quadlock do do some really really good stuff. I mean, for example, you can add on to my system. I've got a um, a charging port, which is quite large to be honest, but it just plugs into your bike, and then every time you put your phone into that cradle or into that mount shall we say it will just charge your phone instantly the price of that on its own just that one part 
is 69.99. So bearing in mind you've just forked out nearly 80 quid just for your initial mount. You decide you want to have the charging part as well. That's an additional 70 quid on top of your 80 just so you can charge your phone. Now with my bike with the XR, it comes with a USB port right near the handlebar. So, I mean, in theory, I could just plug my iPhone charger into that, into the phone, and it's charging, and it's cost me zero. Um, so yeah, for the sake of 70 or quid, just to have that charging port, I, I just think that's astronomical price, if I'm honest. I did look into other mounts on their website, because um, you can have a mirror mount, you can have obviously a handlebar mount, you can have a fork stem mount. The fork stem mount is the one I looked at. Just to have the fork stem mount, obviously not including the case, not including the vibration damper and all that sort of stuff, just for the fork stem, is starting from 49 99 This is what I mean about Quadlock being so expensive. Is it really worth paying all that money out just to have your phone on your handlebars? and? And like I said, in this current climate, I would really, really struggle to warrant paying that sort of money. It's, no, I probably, I, probably, I, I wouldn't. I, I definitely wouldn't pay out that sort of money. Now I know there's companies out there who do something very similar to Quadlock. Um, I believe that some of them are cheaper, some of them may be more expensive, I'm not really sure. But for the amount of times I've actually used my Quadlock on my handlebars, it just, I just can't warrant paying that sort of money out. I, re I really, really can't. Now, I'm going to be honest, I have got the car mount for it as well. Um, but I actually really like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, the car mount on its own is uh, £40. But it doesn't need the vibration dampener. It sticks to your windscreen. It's really, really, really solid. Again, you can have the added uh, charging port into the back out as well. Again, you look at another 70 quid. Wouldn't bother. I just plug my phone into my cigarette lighter and it charges it. So for me, that would just be an extra outlay completely pointlessly. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate how difficult this actually is putting this onto this quad lock. Um, I mean it could go on straight away first time which then that would be quite embarrassing but that's only really happened probably twice three times since I've had this thing. I always end up faffing about with it so um, so I'll move you to get you a better angle and then uh, we'll see how many times it takes me to get this thing on if I actually manage to do it. So I know you can't see me, but the idea is obviously quad lock has the quad system. These are the four points that should connect into these four points here. And the idea is you put it on an angle, twist it, and away it goes. But we'll see. You can feel the vibration dampener moving around underneath the phone. Which then obviously then is moving the phone like that all the time. So every time you go, you think it's in position, it just doesn't go. I mean, that sitting there right now, you'd think that would uh, click in, twist, nothing. That's at the position it should be, twist, nothing. And this is what I'm saying about it's just such a bloody faff. Right, there you go, finally in. To undo it, push down this, twist, because that's how it locks in. So that, even if I try and twist it now, it won't come out. So you have to push down that little lever, twist it, and out. Try again. See, this is <laughs> it's exactly what I mean. On the odd occasion, it will go in, and that's not good enough for me. The odd occasion, it should be simple as bump, bump, in. And that's what I mean. It shouldn't be a matter of that and messing around with it, trying to get in the right position and stuff like that. It should be a of in, on, lock. But it just doesn't work. What I'll do now is I'll go to my car and show you the uh, car mount and how easy that is compared to this and you'll see why I prefer the car one to the bike one. Oh. 
told you it was raining. Anyway, that is the car mount for the quad lock system. Now, if I show you how simple this is to put on compared to the bike, on, twist, job done. Simple as that, on, twist. Because you can feel it. Because it doesn't move around, literally push it, you can feel that point in there. Click, you know it's gonna twist, on. I mean, it isn't coming off whatsoever. Twist, off. And that's my issue with the handlebar mount for the motorbikes. It should be as simple as that. But as you just seen earlier on, it isn't. But anyway, let's go back to the garage. So in a nutshell then, would I recommend a quad lock system? If you're happy to pay out that sort of money for a mount just to put your phone on your handlebars, then 100%. They are very, very good at what they do. My issue is the pricing and how much of a faff it is to put my phone onto my handlebar mount onto a bike. Like I said to you and like you just seen, the car one, perfect, on, twist, job done. If it was that simple on the bike, great. But because you have to have that vibration dampener on it, it just becomes too much of a faff and a fiddle for my liking. But like I say, if you're aware that you kind of need that vibration dampener, you're aware that, you know, that case will only ever fit that phone you ordered it for, you get a new phone, you break your phone, you're gonna have to buy another case on top of that to make sure it fits that system. I find them very much like Apple products. Once you've sort of bought into that system, you're kind of stuck with it. You know, you, if you want to carry on using that mount or you want to carry on using your phone mount, you're gonna to have to keep buying new cases all the time. And yes, I am in that system, but if I'm completely honest with you, they are overpriced. Um, I think they're a lot of money for what they actually are. And as you see, it's a lot of faff just trying to get my phone on my bike. Um, the car one, brilliant. If you wanna get one for your car, they are very, very, very good. Really simple to use. I use it all the time. Every time I'm in the car, plonk it on there, job done. It's easy. The bike one, I don't know. I, I, I can't stand by that one because it just annoys me that much. So do I think quad lock's worth the money? Unfortunately not, I don't think so. I don't think it's worth the amount of money you pay for it. But it's your decision, it's your money. It's just my opinion. Because there is other options out there, it isn't just quad lock, just seems to be quad lock seems to be the one pushing all their advertisement and everyone recommending it and getting their celebrities in and stuff like that. I've been using it for, for say three years, sort of using it for three years. I've had it for three, four years. Um, and I am not overly keen on the bike ones. The car ones, yes, definitely. The bike versions, I don't know. I, I just don't get on with it. You may find it perfectly fine. I don't. I just can't bother with that faff. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.